Welcome to Rose City, the after show, the podcast where we dive into the wonderful world of the popular novel Rose City by author Karina Q. In each episode, we will be discussing a different aspect of the book from the complex characters to the interplot twists and everything in between. Check out Rose City on Kindle Bella to stay up to date as we explore unique perspectives on the story. And today we have a special guest, no one other than my lovely niece and my great nephew, Bella Ella from the two by three East Side Love. We love it. Yes, we do. Say something to the folks, Bella. Guys, I brought with me my little friend. This is Sincere. Um, he's going to be joining us on the podcast today. Hopefully, you don't get to acting too crazy. But um, it's definitely a blessing to be here. And thank you guys for inviting me again. Well, we always enjoy having you here because you just help bring some more of that tea, bring some of that za, bring that juice. How are you ladies feeling this morning? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Ready to act up a little bit. I'm though. not going to deal with that. That's, that's, that's a no. I need- I can hear that sexy dance, honey. And let's just give a shout out to all the ladies. You know, to everybody out here doing their thought fizzle, looking real fine today. Loving it, loving the beats, loving the hair. Oh yes, my girls always come through. Like, hello, I told you, I told y'all, but I told you I wasn't listening. But I told you, but I guess she was right. I was. Can we sexy with Kiri? What? I said I want to hear her sexy voice, Kiri. Gave me a thumbs up. I was like, mm. "Hey, y'all, I'm doing good." <laughs> <laughs> Not so much bad, uh, you know, because we just have to do it. All right. Well, our speaker this afternoon, whatever time zone you have, we in some different ones. Okay? So the icebreaker is directly related to this chapter. Malia received a very strange gift. And our icebreaker question was, what is the strangest gift you've ever received from someone? Better. You want to hear your thoughts? Well, I don't I've ever received any um, strange gifts, but uh, I do think it's weird to be gifted socks as a grown woman. So... I think I will say that's that's my strange gift uh, that you actually went to the store and and thoughtfully purchased me some socks and uh, and that was it. Like you know, if it's a side gift, that's fine. But the the whole gift being socks, that's a bit weird. You don't wear socks. Hmm. You're a good person. She really better to give her some socks. She gonna do that. Alicia, what was the strangest gift you received? Um, it, it wasn't strange. It was the fact that I did receive it. Um, I had posted something on Facebook about um, it was just like some Harry Potter um, makeup brushes, and um, I ended up getting them. I thought it was from somebody who told me she, she she knew who it was, um, and I just found that out. So when she told me, I was like, oh my years ago. So I never knew who it came from, but yeah, I went to the mailbox and there was a whole set of Harry Potter makeup brushes. I still have them. <laughs> I use them. They were brushes. So. Quality. And, you know, I didn't realize that you didn't know who it because there was this guy who was like crushing hard on Alicia. It was a whole thing. He was a friend of mine, and he was talking to her, and he'd be like, I'm going to send her rose. I mean, she's everything. And then Alicia would be like, I don't think this is going to work. And I'd be like, why? He's crazy about you. And she's like, when we get on the phone, he doesn't say anything to me. He just looks at me, you know, through the screen. And so I was like, that's odd, because when he gets on with me, he can't stop talking about how beautiful she is, how she's so funny. He loves her weight. Like, he loves how they can make these jokes and talk about all this and have these all these Thing. But then he gets on the phone and says nothing. So I thought he was sending flowers. I guess he decided to Harry Potter uh, makeup brushes. I mean, which is fine because she's a big Harry Potter fan. She's a Potterhead, baby. Yeah, a Potterhead, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, she's a Potterhead. Um, Ella, do you have any strange or odd gifts or something? And you was like, honey, you could have kept it. You know what? It probably 
it was weird to me in the moment. Um, when I was 17, um, I had met this other little, little boy that I was talking to. And he had came to the house and was like, hey, I have a gift for you. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to bring it over here. <laughs> and he waited until he got in front of my dad to show me the gift. Why was it an, an engagement ring? That's not a gift, sir. That's not what I wanted. It's not what I asked for. I'm 17. And then he's going to show it in, to my dad, too. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so now we're both going to die. <laughs> and you gave me something that I didn't even ask for. So I thought that that was probably the weirdest gift, like, ever. Like, I don't... No, thank you. <laughs> oh, and then got mad that I said no. Mm -hmm. Refuse me. I think he's giving some Chris energy, everybody. Yeah. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm feeling definitely the strong giving Chris energy. Definitely. Um, I'm gonna say, I wish Alicia hadn't put her um, her screen on. Um, I know she had to walk away, but I wanted some reaction when I said this because she knows I get some really terrible gifts from people. <laughs> people give me really crappy gifts. I have no clue why. I, I a lot of times I'm a very grateful person, and you know, I'm, I'm not a person to be super. For me to be happy, my cousin will tell you she, like, little things for Karina. She's like, Karina is so grateful. She's like, for Christmas. Oh my God, thank you. I'm just like that. And so I think because I, I am so grateful, people feel like they can just give me stuff that anybody asked for. So um, there was this guy who I was dating. Well, I wasn't even dating him. He was just like really pressing me. I like the past point. He's like, shopping. I'd be like, no. Okay, or he'd be like, let me pick you up and take you out to dinner. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Because I didn't want to leave him. I thought he was a really, really nice guy. It was just, it wasn't necessary for all this stuff. Like, oh, I'll spend $400 on you. And he doesn't sound like a lot today. Um, but we're talking about like early 2000s, you know. So that was some money, money, right? I'll spend $400 on you right now. And I'm like, no, it's okay. So we had, we just kept talking. And he was a nice guy. Like, we would talk, like, oh, let's go to the park. Let's like go walking on the trails or something like that. Just little things, right? Let's go drive to the beach, right? So um, he called me up one day. He was like, I went and I bought you these clothes. And I know I'm going to get you to go out with me. Um, and, and But I says, I can't take you shopping because you won't go with me. I went out and I bought you some stuff. He was like, I work in a, in a business setting. So you professional style clothing. Bella, you need to come back for this. <laughs> said, um, I bought you some clothes. I said, okay. So I was like, I'll just meet up with him because he said he has like a big bag of stuff. I got out of the car, was in the parking lot, and baby, I'm like, why you got QFC bag? Last time I checked, QFC didn't sell those. So like, what you talking about, Willis? Because I'm really confused right now, okay? So he was like, let me show you what I got. And he starts pulling clothes out item by item. Baby, it looked like he went through the Golden Girls, like old school. Clothes. They have archives. He was pulling like moo moo. He was pulling out stuff from I probably got from nineteen eighty nine. No or way. Baby, he was like, well, how the hell am I supposed to go to work in a moo moo? Like, and he was like, and I got this little lingerie. Baby, he pulled out something. It was a size sixteen. I never been a size sixteen, and that's why Bella is screaming because my niece knows. She knows. Andy Craig ain't never been a size 16. What was he thinking, right? He pulled out this lingerie that looked like it belonged to my mom. So clearly what happened was he went to Goodwill. Okay, that's what happened. There's no Goodwill. Like, they don't always have Goodwill bags. Like, they'll have recycled bags, or at least the ones I've dealt with. <laughs> so I don't really know about that. Um, he um, was like, I got these slacks for you. And I'm like, I look like Sophia, you know, Sophia Petrillo would have put on four pair of slacks. I didn't understand any of it. And so he's like, oh, this is going to look so good on you at work. And I'm standing there like, okay. Because I was disappointed. I mean, I didn't know. I thought he was going to buy, but he was acting like he had hit Express at the mall. Like he had done it, you know, like he had did his big one. He didn't do nothing. He didn't ride no kind of wave, okay? I didn't understand. I just didn't. So this what happened. So he was like, I just my things for you. And I know he made like really good money because he did construction. So I don't know what type of punk joke this was. I think I was just like, this is what you see? Like you're begging me for a date and you gave me goodwill clothes. 
Uh, and stuff didn't even fit. I don't think the post is good. Well, because she has gone to and got some nice little stuff, honey. They got some brand new stuff over there too. But I haven't been there in a long time. And you know, I was a teenager, so it's different being an adult man who knows like you can go to like a little vintage store and find like a really bomb banging bag, you know. As opposed to being a teenager, you're like, why did you go to Goodwill? Like, I, no. And then the stuff you picked out was terrible. Um, so right before he closed his uh his car, I said. And, you know, wrapped it up and I tossed it back in there as fast as I could. So he called me up like three days later and he's like, hey, um, you didn't take your clothes. <laughs> I did it. I did. I threw it back in there before he could see. So that's what happened. I don't know why he thought that was a good gift, but I've been giving some really crappy gifts. I remember this one boy for Christmas one year and he let it slip that basically it was like his Mother had gotten some gifts from her, a strange boyfriend that she thought was too cheap for her. So then she was like, well, you can give it to your friend. And he's like, here it's sunflower, you know, perfume, which I never liked that sunflower perfume. I thought it stanked. Like he gave me some cheap makeup brushes. Um, he gave me something else, but it all smelled like, you know, like toothpaste. So I didn't, I didn't like it. I've been given some really crappy gifts and I've been given some really nice ones, but some crappy gifts, they really end out, don't they? <laughs> Well, that was my gift. People be doing creative. I'm talking about big dirty. Okay, so ladies, before we go on to questions, let's do a little recap of chapter 38 till death do us part. What were some of y'all's thoughts about this chapter? Well, I guess I can start. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was real crazy. Um, especially the detectives, they were really irking my nerves on a whole nother level. And I've noticed, especially with women of color in real life, it's harder to explain your side of the story without always having to be presumed as oh, you did something for somebody to act like this towards you or you were wearing something and this is why they're coming after you. It's like, it shouldn't always have to be something that I'm doing for somebody to harass me. So that's something that I was just like really just thrown about, but that happens in everyday life too. And even if you did do something, you still don't deserve to be harassed. You know, like you went to have a cup of tea with somebody and he took it too far because he don't understand the meaning of friendship and you've been friends and you don't like it, you know, but <laughs> um, I feel like this chapter, we we got to see a glimpse into how crazy Chris uh, is um, and we don't know what he's going to do next. So um it's it's exciting for the story but you know it's also pretty scary because <laughs> we've seen a lot of stories like this on the news and in movies and stuff it's just like mm -hmm. malia malia you better watch out girl um create his um reappearance i guess you could say um and i just thought i can't get over um because I was sent pictures of what these things would look like. And I mean, I just lost it. And that's all that's in my head right now is those little brats, wedding gowns. And stuff. I'm though out of the whole chapter, that's what got me was the gift. I guess the <laughs> strange gift out, out of everything, all the lines, all the back and forth, blah, 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 blah. All the is the gifts because I know what they look like and it's hilarious. We got to find some way to like, Post those pictures. I'm going to try to edit them in when I edit uh, this uh, video. So. Cool. Because that, yeah, it was so nice. She's the one who said to me, What do you think about this? And there's one, he had like glass on or what going through. He had like a, a scissor in one hand and a, and a hair. And I'm like, Who are you? Think somebody going to do some hair. Please tell me, I don't know, you know. So, um, 
Yeah, I know what Bella said. I definitely think that the detective part stood out. So at this point, folks, Malia, he, she, you know, she, had a, she had a one day, had a full day. She's still on so high because her and Tan had a great, you know, Sunday afternoon together, had that little cute little date. You know, he he did it up big for her. I remember at the park, you know, getting on one knee, acting like he was supposed to be real extra, but having fun, right? She was up Monday morning, she'll feel it. Work and she's crossing the street. She's like, it's Chris. Folks. And he's on Chris's back. He is standing behind the tree with his sweatshirt and he's giving her all the little dirty eye. Like, he's giving her nasty eye. Like, okay, because now he's mad. Because, like, I'm you, I'm keeping what's going on here. Chris knows that Malia is involved in some. I mean, it's not, I, got, I guess an official relationship, but she finally asked them. Stop beating around the bush. He was like, yo, okay, let's do this, right? So, Tan sees Malia and was like, I know. I saw him. She nearly got hit by a car crossing the because she saw him looking behind the end. Um, point, she's like, it's a designer, got something they got to do today. Everything looks great. Malia's like, her thing, somebody's like, oh, you have a, a delivery. So she's like, you know, nice white box with a bow on it. Beautiful, you know, two dozen roses, long stuff. And they're like, girl, Tan, honey, he's really acting up. Like he's showing all that effort. As they were going through the box, they look, they saw, well, they look and they seen that there were something else in there. There were two mice wearing a wedding dress and a tuxedo. And... Some people were acid in the middle of their face. So there's a big hole in their faces are all formed. So Sarah, who works at the, who works, you can get that out. <laughs> you like that? Sarah, she don't care. Sarah, who works at the boutique, she sees it. She's screaming. She drops the box. Malia's like, what's going on? They're looking at it. Who could do this? So they read a note. A note from Chris. He's not happy. He's like, baby. You hurt me. I don't have nobody to make coffee for. Like, you know, he's just telling her all about herself. He feels like Malia has been cheating. How can I cheat if I've never been with you? You know, that's, that's a real thing, right? So Chris feeling like Malia is involved in an entanglement and he wants her to stop. Okay. He makes some good old threats, but I guess the whole burning of the, the nice face was really let Malia know I love I will hurt you. So you, you should probably just come on and get on this train. Make it easy for everybody or else I'm going to have to start looking people up. Okay. So that's much what happened. But what Bella had said about Malia, because they ended up having to call the police. I mean, anybody sends you roses and, and dead mice wearing outfits and face been burned up, please dial 911 as fast as you can. Um, but I feel like what, what I was saying was so relevant because so many times I think as women, when someone has interest in us, and even if you feel that, that way back, uh, and that person, everybody automatically blames the victim. Well, you're probably taking gifts from him. He's probably paying some of your bills. You probably had him coming over cleaning your clocks. And you knew you never planned on loving him. What? What? The weakness? So, um, as the detective showed up, I mean, they were, you know, agree. She wasn't me of a stocking, you know, they're telling her, well, there's not much that can be done. And Malia's like, what do you mean? Not, not much can be done. He's showing up at my, house. he was my apartment. And they were like, well, he can just simply say that somebody else invited him over. And like, but you know, he didn't. Where he, he, he didn't have no, you know, like how did he get in? He must've snuck in. They were like, they get him on trespassing, but probably nothing else. I mean, they were giving her the law, but it still wasn't very encouraging. They were just like, you know, and if you, you could just just get a restraining order and Eva, honey, she bossed him was like, do what? Throw it at him when he starts chasing her? I was trying to get it. You know, like, what are we supposed to do with it? So, yeah, I, I wanted to have it in there, but I definitely, a lot of times when women go through things, particularly with a player, we are blamed for, hey, is this person so obsessed with you? Are you sure there are just by the women who really jaded? And you don't know what it feels like to be anymore because you've been so independent, so so strong. Yeah, maintenance woman for so long. No, it looks like when a man wants to court you, 
again, if somebody wants to court you, that's something that happens where two people have to agree to being courted. All right. So that like what I was saying, it's just a lot of times women get blamed for those those types of things. Um, somebody likes you. What did you do? What did you do? Not what did he do? So I think that um, we have to put emphasis on the the person who's doing the wrong. They need to be the person holding blame. You don't blame the victim. Well, um, you don't talk him every day. Like Kyrie said, um, well, you had to be with a person or you had dinner. It doesn't entitle you to my soul. I don't care if I ate with you. I don't care if we went out on a spa day together. I don't care if you did take me shopping. You're not entitled to me. I don't change my mind. Maybe I thought you were great and you came out to be Freddy Krueger and I can't get you in nightmares. Like, you know, so that's that. Mm -hmm.